So we played one league of this deck last night, or yesterday on stream, and uh, it, it went pretty well. We four ones, and I was like very excited about the Leyline Scion package in Coffers. I know that a lot of us, especially our 45 remoths of Doomwake, are of the opinion we're in Leyline Spring, where every deck jams Leyline Scion. Maybe they're right, maybe they're not right. Um, but at the very least, I think it makes a lot of sense in the coffer shell. I was like immediately really impressed with it. I think that the package makes a lot of sense when you have extra synergy with Leyland of the Guild Pact. We saw this like work really, really well in the Enchantress deck, where this deck, this card is like really castable and lets you play Nykthos Shrine to Nyx as like an extra good mana engine, and it's also an enchantment to just like cast and draw cards. Um in this deck, it turns on your Cabal Coffers and you can pitch it to March of Richard Sora, which is awesome. Uh and what what has also got me really interested in this archetype now, like a lot more than it has been, is that previously I've been like of the opinion that the no coffers build is just has just been better, and I, I kind of still like think that that is probably the case. Like I'm like twelve and one with this list, and um, this is the, the this the list also like got picked up by a lot of people, and people are like top eighting with it. Like the, the finally people are giving the mono black no coffers the respect it deserves. But the deck is also now like really different from uh from the coffers build, or at least like this this coffers build is super different from this build. Like it used to be like okay, you are both <laughs> you're both playing Sunken Citadel, Field of Ruin. You're both playing Bowmasters. You're both playing the One Ring. You're both playing Thoughtseize, and you're just kind of opting for like better mana and a sideboard and grief scam over like the card package plus coffers. And so I was never that in I was I just haven't been that interested in coffers in a while because I just feel like this is the kind of build I'd prefer to play. But now look at it. Not neither list are playing Bowmasters anymore. Bowmasters is just like not a very well positioned card in the format. Um, this list is playing Liliana grief scam Sunken Citadel fields. This list is playing. Uh, Fetchland, Domain Mana Base, No Sunken Citadel, No Fields, along with side of the Coffers Mana Base. Like, the actual overlap of cards is really small. You have Basic Swamps, uh, three Thoughtsies Overlap, four Thoughtsies Overlap, and then the Rings, and then one Shieldred. And that's, like, that's, like, literally, I guess Wonderboard, huh? <laughs> that's, like, literally it as far as, uh, like, overlapping cards goes, which is, like, really, really interesting to me that all of a sudden, like, the two lists that felt like so similar and just like, you know, like, oh, I just kind of prefer this one to the coffers. Now, all of a sudden, they're just like two like completely different decks. I, I don't think I don't think it's any longer a conversation of two coffers or not to coffers. It's like it's just like, do you play like this kind of like broken big mana control deck or do you play like, you know, do you play the like very consistent, stable mid range deck? Um, And I'm not, you know, not, not trying to say that this build is certainly better than the no coffers i think the no coffers build is so sick it's been doing so well but move forward to first league with this one look pretty good i made some changes today too um i ended up adding cutting the fourth basic swamp for the first underground mortuary kind of weird to be a play a green surreal land but i just wanted the the leyland of the guild pack to be a little bit more hard castable and then uh i added tithing blade and pithing needle over the break the ice of the necromancer that were the sideboard i thought it'd be good to have like a bunch of profane tutor targets but um, thinking about it more, just in most, in most of the spots, you just tutor Karn. <laughs> you just tutor Karn anyways. Uh, although I still want an Ashiok for the, for the Titan matchup. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and keep, uh, this one. Somebody who doesn't own a place at the coffers and really the option exists. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, that is true. The option exists. The no coffers deck is doing well. Top eight a lot of tournaments over the weekend, which is awesome. We had a really good run with it. Dingus with the 32, welcome back. Will, will that deck continue to be super well positioned? We'll see. It does seem like... People are like Leyland uh, Scion is still very popular. It's so the mono black that gets to capitalize on it. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I'm just, for the first time in a long time, I'm really interested in working on the coffers archetype because I no longer just feel like it's worse than <laughs> it's worse. I feel like it's, it's different now. Do you think either coffers or no coffers would play the draw three tutor we talked about on Twitter? Uh, it would be coffers if, if, if I, if either of them played, it would be the coffers variant. Um, I don't know that either would play. So, uh, Meyer Mountain. Let's go ahead and Thought Season and push. Inti, Imperial Recruiter, Lightning Bolt, Epicur. Very juicy. I'm definitely taking Inti. Mm. 
they think about instable avarice plus Vesuvian Drifter combo. Uh that is that's the new card. Vesuva Drifter is not a, a good card. Uh it's it's not gonna combo well with a three mana, put something on top. It's very slow, very clunky. Like we we had trouble going like Altar of Dementia into Lamplight Phoenix. Like this was something that was like we like failed spectacularly with. Um <laughs> you know, just like like what what should have been super efficient two mana artifact into three mana creature, win the game immediately. Uh, on turn three, this is, you know, this is a turn four, like, attack with an Emrakul. Uh, this is, you know, win the game on turn three that cannot be disrupted by creature removal. This even wasn't good enough. Like, I I just don't know that. <laughs> or at least our build wasn't good enough. CFT Socks build was really good, I think. Um, I'm not really of the opinion that, uh... Like, like, you could build a deck around, like, three mana creature, untap, three mana sorcery, have emeralds in your deck that are dead cards. It's just so tough. Yeah, I saw CFT Sox Lamplight deck. I thought it was really, really good looking. Uh, CFT Sox builds are always so sick, so intricate. Okay, so there's going to be NT coming down next turn. My opponent still has Lightning Bolt in their hand. Seems like I should probably just go Karn for the ring, and I can Binding NT and play the ring next turn. Yeah, they had sixty-eight cards. We 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 tried a little bit with sixty-eight cards. Uh, I have I have a build also of Lamplight Phoenix that I'm working on. That I I don't I don't know if if this will make it to the stream or not. You know, it's just one of those things. I've been really cooking lately. I feel like the format has been like so good post final out for span. Like despite everybody shit talking on Twitter, but holy shit, has I feel like the format is like I'm so I'm so engaged. But I I built a Leyland Scion build of it. Obviously, Leyland Scion kicked W, but it 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 does just make a lot of sense of the deck, I think, <laughs> where both of these are it, it give you your high mana value thing and turns on binding. Binding's another card you want to play, and so like I I got the list down to sixty, um, sixty with the proper mana requirements like this, with also having a lot less tap lands than I've had in other builds. Um, I've I've only played like two matches with this deck off stream, and um. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I I I I don't I don't think we're gonna stream this today. I'm gonna keep like working on it off stream and kind of like you know get get some matches in and uh, try to form an opinion. They reveal grinning Ingus, so I guess they are Ingus comboing, huh? Ooh, a cabal coffers. Frozen North, the three years. Let's go, Rob, with the two years. Thank you so much. Appreciate both of y'all. I want to get this before the blood tokens online. Little insight doesn't go in every deck. It just makes a lot of sense in a huge number of decks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. I, I'm someone who really likes very precise language when it comes to talking about magic cards. I kind of, like, can't function otherwise if I don't know what the hell we're talking about. I need, like, super precise language. It doesn't... I can't just go with every deck. I know, I know most people are being hyperbolic, but... I don't know, like, like in this deck, it would make no sense if it just if it wasn't like just so in on the cabal coffers and I don't know. <laughs> um, likely just gonna march this turn. Playing a second ring is kind of interesting because then I could coffers and make an even bigger march next turn. Yeah, well, I missed the pithy needle yesterday. I also um really like Mingu's tech of the Tithing Blade, a tutorable edict. Makes a lot of sense in the Leyline Scion format. Would Lily say make sense in Merfolk? No, I would not I would not play it in Merfolk. Um I would like I would not play it in Merfolk. I don't think I would play it in Scam. Although it, it is like more reasonable in Scam because you have grief to pitch the, the ley lines. I think Doomwig, the Doomwig play, played in Scam. Maybe it was Dingo. Maybe it was both. Yeah, I think it, it, it also flip. Yeah, flipping Tithing Blade seems really real. I agree. Is it the new image three spoilers? No, let's <laughs> shut everything down.
Yeah, opponent's playing some kind of grinning Ingus combo deck. I imagine this is like with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. It's gonna binding the Fable here. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the luxury of when people make no sense on magic opinions. I get to yell. I guess most people don't have that uh <laughs> that luxury. So Profane Tutor coming down next turn. We can cast that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and surveil first before I draw. Okay, so we're gonna go activate coffers, send the thoughtsies over there. Shrapnel Blast. Kind of surprised they didn't attack and then Shrapnel Blast the Scion. I actually feel like perhaps they've made a huge blunder here. Okay, so this one. So pay black first. Just pay, just pay the non-green colors and then pay green last because otherwise you can get a little stuck. Where are the MH3 spoilers? Are there no MH3 spoilers? It was Outlaws? Oh, okay. I, I saw the I saw the split Imperial Seal Painful Truths, although it's not really Imperial Seal because it's like... So So they, they've made another kicker mechanic. All mechanics are a kicker. Blah, 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 blah. But it's multi-kicker without the spell. <laughs> Spree. Choose one or more additional cost. So there's no spell. It's all multi-kicker. So for a black mana, you can either pay black and three to search library for a card and then put it on top. Or black, black, black to draw three, lose three. This doesn't exist already. Pay three black mana, draw three cards, lose three life. Um, you can also target your opponent, which is, so, which is some upside. Painful Truths is a card that is occasionally seen fringe play in modern. This card seems significantly better because it's mono black. Um, and it has like two upsides of being able to both like tutor when you have coffers going and also being able to target your opponent. Um, it's like good with, but like with Orcish Bowmasters, it's like kind of gnarly too, where you like target your opponent, they lose six. Um, lose 12 if you have two Bowmasters in play. Could be, could be a playable modern card. This, this is from the, the new set, the new standard set coming up, Thunder Junction. Um, because my opponent's playing an interesting mono red cauldron combo deck. Um, for the most part, with this list, we're like kind of pre boarded for creature decks game one, and then we board out our removal for reprieves in sideboard games, uh, where we don't want a bunch of like fatal pushes and damnations and stuff. Um, could see myself maybe bringing in Nile Spellbomb because of Cauldron, Pithy Needle. I kind of want to bring in the Needle because Karn, Karn like passively stops Cauldron and stuff, but this like. Would stop. I guess would it stop grinning Ingus? It would stop grinning Ingus, right? Or is it is it a mana ability? It's not cauldron. They're also like almost definitely a vile deck if they're playing. Um. Yeah, is that is 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 grinning Ingus a mana ability? It's, it makes mana. Um. What's up? What's up's the uh, aether vile though? I'm gonna board out of thoughtsies. So we'll not name Grinning Ingus this with this, but I think Vile Cauldron, enough for me to board in the Needle. Especially when Karn just, like, stops those things, so you don't need to, like, get there, get it with Karn that often. So hypothetically, you can just play a black and the card still goes in the stack? I guess so. I don't think you're going to be playing it in, like, a prowess deck that often. Maybe, maybe you'll, like, have an ensnaring bridge in play or something. I just need to get it out of your hand. Uh, Anusar with the 25 months. Thank you, welcome back. Ingus is a trigger. I think it's a mana activated mana ability. I thought mana abilities had to tap. Yeah, like I don't think so. Like, like you can't pithing needle pintad prism, and that doesn't tap. Can you? Pay, yeah, you can pay five for both. You can pay five for both. So, like, it, it seems like this card could go in coffers. Um. Wow. Let's keep. Also, like, what I like about this deck is you have thought season to leyline scion. Like, the, like thought season is like such a sick turn one play when you just have like the nuts like this. Oh yeah, Wall of Roots also. That, that's the more common, <laughs> more common one. So my opponent has Mulligan to six on the play here. I'm gonna play a Cabal Coffers on turn one, and you know, also if you've heard me talk about Coffers as an archetype, I just always complain about, you know, just all of these hands that don't function because they have Cabal Coffers in them. Uh, but now that's just like really not the case anymore. Um, I'm gonna take the Fable actually. This NT just doesn't do anything against my Scion. Maybe they'll be able to grab 
like Haywire Might off of Urza Saga. They did get green. Countdown until ban of Leyline of the Guild Pact. Uh, uh, maybe. I, it, it might get banned. It might not. I'd be Scion. Um, I'm, ha I'm having a lot of fun, and I think, I kind of feel like shit is really good and interesting at the moment, and it just feels to me way too early to, like, seriously advocate for a banning of anything. I think it's, like, even silly to think that you could seriously advocate for the banning of something at the moment. Um... I don't know. You could probably see how ubiquitous this is. But it's, it's also just like, a lot of this is just like people trying to figure out where is, th th this is obviously good. It's good in Domain Zoo. And like, it, like is it like, is it like, it's good in, in Domain Rhinos also, which is a deck that like is underplayed at the moment and will see more play in tournaments soon, uh, in my opinion. Um, and people I think are just mostly trying to figure out like, is this combo uh, good elsewhere? It feels like a, a worthwhile pursuit to me. Um, so I think my opponent's going to Haywire Might Me, so I'm going to just go ahead and actually just Graveyard this and then Suspend Profane Tutor this turn. Seems okay. I should still be able to block the Enti pretty profitably. And then... Um, also, if they make two Saga tokens and like just get the Haywire Might, then maybe I can Binding the Might next turn. Leyline is so boring. 16% of scamming you is not good for the format. I don't know. The thing also, like, unlike, this is so much worse than Grief Scam, y'all. Like, I would much rather play against this than Grief Scam. If you want to beat this, you can. We were 12 and 1 with four Liliana of the Veils in our deck. It's like, if you want to beat this, you can. Pick your poison exists, edicts exist. Ignoring this combo by just playing, by going over the top is super doable. Uh, Wraths are good again. I just, like, this is, like, so annoying for, like, specifically Scam and Murktide. But I also kind of just don't mind Domain Zoo becoming the new, like, tempo tempo deck of the format for a while. We've had Scam and Murktide be the de facto best interactive decks for years. Like, two years, a year and a half. Since Loris has banned, really. Let's, like, it's so bad to just have this. I, I, I think I enjoy playing with and against Leyline Scion. Like, if I'm not playing with Leyline Scion... I feel like I just basically always have, like, a pretty good comprehensive plan to beat it. Uh, also, this build of Carver is a lot less weak to Pithing Needle, because we have access to Binding. But it's okay, you could also just, you could also say, yeah, I hate this shit, brother. Get it out of here. And that would be uh, completely valid. If you remove the Hexproof, I'd be with you, but it's Hexproof. I mean, if you remove the Hexproof, this wouldn't even be good. <laughs> I think. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't see almost any play. Like, Domain Zoo wouldn't play it, probably. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe they would play, maybe they play Leyland still, but. Uh, I I don't know, I just, I just feel like we, I want to see the metagame try to adjust, like, and give it, give it, a, give it a couple weeks. See what happens. Yeah, Shadow Spear can remove Hexproof. Maybe I should Binding the Shadow Spear, main phase. If Leyland Sign would be played only in Domain, I agree. Playing against Murktide is just much better experience. Prog so Scam Sign had the biggest win rate. Did it? I don't think it did. I, I'm i going to call misinfo on that because I looked at the data. I don't. I, mean, I, could, I could be misremembering. I want to look at that, that, that chart again. Someone wants to link it. Yeah, it's also small sample size. Only out of two people playing it. Yeah, you, you can't be like two people played this deck and had highest win rate. It's just not good. Not good data. So I'm going to binding this uh, Shadow Spear. Then my opponent will make a Saga token. I'll binding that Saga token. And then I'll be able to uh, chomp up both of these here. Although, wait. This shrinks down to 4-4. Four, four. Because I've ever been the plus one from the spear. I guess I don't have the binding yet then. Yeah, also we're about to have MH3. It's okay. But yeah, if you don't, if you don't like Leyland and Scion, you are totally valid in this uh, this take. I understand it's not something that it, <laughs> everybody's into. But I'm having fun. All right, I had a profane tutor coming off. So I guess I shouldn't have surveilled because I'm always shuffling. 
every day. Um, I think do I just grab the one ring and then binding the needle? It's kind of bad if they have second needle. Um, yeah, I'll just get a card. Do we get tithing blade? I like that I can flip this. Because I have the Scion in the yard. Could needle Urza Saga. I think I'm going to get engineered explosives and then just put explosives on one. So this way my opponent can either needle the explosives and that would be okay. Or I can like get whatever they get with the, the, the Saga. You can play a Witch's Cottage in this deck over a Swamp. It'd be nice to occasionally put Scion back on top. Mm, yeah, maybe. Maybe you could play a Cottage. I'm worried about just the number of tap lands in general, because we have double Surveil and double Triome. And, like, just, like, having five lands that are tapped early is tough, but I wouldn't hate it. Could you please update the box for the deck list? Uh, should be up to date. See what might be inaccurate. Okay, so the, the, the link to the list looks correct. I guess I was streaming all day yesterday without the right link. <laughs> okay, should should still be up to, up to date. Or should should now be up to date. Oopsie goopsie. I'm going to keep this. I think I'm supposed to lead on the Savai Triome. Like, especially after having, like, a pretty rough, like, two, three months prior to MKM's release. I'm having a great time. Standard needs to keep growing. Yeah, Standard has been really cool. I, I've only played two Standard events. I have done zero, like, I've done zero prep for Standard outside of, like, messaging people and, like, watching, watching like, Doom Lake play some Standard or watching Ash play some Standard. That's like that's about all I've done for like prep off off of events. But I played I played blue white at the seventy five k. I did pretty well. I mean I made a pretty deep run. Um, and then okay, so we do have Karn on the play, which is pretty important. Thoughtseize or binding this star could just be it. But I think I should Thoughtseize instead. Ugh. Um, so I'm gonna take the scrying. Tron players Mulligan. I mean actually don't Mulligan Tron players. I don't have to break the ice on my sideboard today. Don't mulligan. Yeah, see, I, I agree that standard has just been feeling incredibly healthy. I'm just going to binding this. Uh, I get, Karn is going to turn off map by itself. Actually, Karn is just going to win this game. Is it true that even if you finish last place of PT, you still get a thousand dollars, like Happy Gilmore situation? Um, when I played in PT Barcelona, you had to day two to make cash. So I, I did day two, and then I did off awful on day two, um, and then I, I think it was a thousand. But you also get um, you also get like a promo. You get like multiple promos. Like I got a Jace the Mind Sculptor alternate art, and then I got this alternate art Gandalf that I actually just sold and. Is like worth way too much fucking money. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm also gonna bring in needle. I might bring in stone brain. So I'm right on the draw is kind of kind of rough. I think I can play like one or two marches still. Stone brain's pretty good on the play. I can think against this trump player. I'll bring it in. I also don't usually like Ashok against. I'm not gonna bring it in on the draw. It's just not doesn't do anything on the draw. But maybe I'll bring it in on the play over. Second March. I remember a lot of people were selling their Pro Tour Gandalfs like to vendors for like three or four hundred dollars. I'm like, this is like a super limited print EDH staple. <laughs> and then my my fellow modern gamers were like, how do you know this is an EDH staple? I'm like, it's a Gandalf that doubles ETBs and it's five mana, brother. This is it. <laughs> the EDH players are gonna love this. <laughs> 
It's a five mana Gandalf that doubles ETB triggers. <laughs> I can't think of a more EDH card. Um, let's mulligan our seven. Can't have Leyland in every hand. Do you have Urborg Cabal Coffers in this one? Let's keep. Let's put back the. Let's put back the back streets. Thoughts on EDH cards being a promos? I was really happy with my EDH card being a promo because I sold it for a lot of money. <laughs> that, that was awesome. Love that. All right, so take the scrying. Wait, they had Power Plant Tower? Dude, I'm getting Mandela affected right now. I bailed out by this Thoughtseize, but I, I totally read their hand wrong. I totally read their hand wrong, so now I can't even uh, Profane Tutor to set up for Karn on turn 4. Yeah, I see the new Black Tutor draw spell. Um, I, I think the card's nice. It's good with Bowmasters. It's like, a, it's like a much better Painful Truth because it's mono black and has like multiple upsides. I like that card. That sold a lot of people. Their pies are laughing at the price. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I know it's like I I don't I don't blame them. It's silly. It's it's worth that much. But <laughs> okay, so they decide to play Urza Saga before. I guess they uh, will they just cast Leveler next turn too. I don't know. I'm gonna get Domain Online so I can maybe binding the Leveler or try to get Domain Online. Do they not have Urza's Tower in their hand? What is happening? Agree, agree, disagree. Invasion Era was the best art. Uh, invasion of Zendikar? <laughs> I started playing in Return to Ravnica. So Profane Tutor ticks down. Second Coffers is juicy. Freya, 45 months. Welcome back. We're doing well. We'll probably, if I draw like Leyline, I'll probably march this right now. Yeah, this is like Leyline adjacent. Doubt they have Needle in their deck or. Or, like, really want to needle the one ring. Hopefully the best they can do is cast Cityscape Leveler. That can go, like, Karn Tithing Blade. Then I guess they can unearth. I think New Phyrexia is favorite. New Phyrexia is pretty sick. I, I, I guess I've never really thought about, like, what set has my favorite art. Modern Horizons 2, probably. <laughs> Lord of the Rings also I thought was, like... I thought they did a great job bringing the set to life. Can someone tell me why Spree is different from Kicker? So, so one thing about Magic is that most mechanics are like Kicker. <laughs> They're Kicker or like into the battlefield effect. Um, but what's cool about what's cool about Spree is it's like Kicker. It's multi Kicker without the card. It's just all Kicker, <laughs> all Kicker, no card. I think it's kind of funny. Okay, so I. I think this is kind of the rare spot where you draw with ring before... Oh, sorry. Should have let my freaking damage happen first. But draw with ring first. So you can get a little bit more info on what we're tutoring. Although I guess it's like just always... It's just always got to be Karn. I, I, did, I did have a break the ice in the deck yesterday. I could overload break the ice here. And that would have been an awesome screenshot. I've been so famous online. But I guess we'll just get Karn, right? Reprieve also looking kind of nice. Let's get Karn. It's gotta be Karn. Lead on the Thoughtseize. Okay. So I think I'm just gonna go Karn, grab Spell Spellbomb, which is not something you do that often in this matchup. Pop the Spellbomb, <laughs> cast Scion. Use all my mana perfectly too.
if you do a deck tech for pure modern. Uh, it won't be as, like, insightful, probably, as a regular modern deck tech, but I, I, I'd give it a go, yeah, sure. Two mana Jace. Walker. Jace, wheel, rake, end. You can't cast a spell during your first, second, or third turns in the game. Cool. Draw a card, discard a card. You may exile a non-land card to mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted. Okay. Until end of turn, whenever you cast a spell, you may choose a new target. Copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This also works on non-instants and sorceries. What does plotted mean? Plot is plotted. You give me a second on the deck tech, Felipe. Is plotted's not this new mechanic that with the like the multi kicker? That's spree. So we don't we don't know what plotted means yet. So this is kind of like an Oko situation where the card is spoiled and we don't know what a food token is. So I think I just have to grab Cityscape Leveler. Not gonna cast the thoughts he is. We might get to patch up a patch update cityscape leveler. Um, also, should I needle Karin the Great Creator? It's very awkward to do so, but that is like their best top deck by a lot, and kind of like the main thing that gets them out of the situation, besides Ulamog. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of weird. I'm gonna name Karin the Great Creator. Just leave this in as stony silence. It's basically foretell. It's not basically foretell. Yeah, what, what what is it? To plot a spell, okay, plot a spell for X, for a cost X out. You can play it for free on a later turn. So the plus one is like make three mana, and then that and then that whatever spell you use gains flash. That sounds awesome. This card is very interesting. Obviously, if you could just cast it on turn two, it'd be it'd be insane. This card would be really good if it didn't have this mode where you can't cast it till turn four. Because you can't cast it till turn four, I'm not like, you know, going crazy or anything. Uh, okay, I still have Godless Shrine, so I can go red, green, white, black, and then keep up. Keep up Reprieve. Patch up Dick Cityscape Leveler. Now, now we even beat a Ulamog, so that's good. Okay, so let's let's do let's do this pure modern deck tech. Do we just do a new tournament? Okay, this is not pure modern. This is just deck tech. Oh, so you're updating the Plunge into Darkness deck, but um, you know, you kind of got to scrap it. Do Tron again? Okay, hopefully we're playing against another goofy Tron player. We have Thoughtseize in the turn four card, but this time we're on the draw. Okay, we, we, looks like our Tron opponent is kind of goofy again. Nurge, Elish Norn. Elish, yeah, Elish Norn's like maybe an exception to this rule too. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, El Elish Norn is maybe an exception to the rule. Wait, and I'm not, and I'm not sure that she is, but. Elishnorn is nice because nothing can ever kill her. She's like immortal. She's in, just like you just play Elishnorn and she's super invincible, which in my which does go a long way towards <laughs> a card's playability. Playability. So they're gonna get three cards off the ring before we Karn, I guess. Sure, wish I was on the play. Maybe she read a story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know she's dead, but like 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 what one nice thing about Elish Norn is she just does almost doesn't die to any removal spells in the format. Is that maybe that's how I should put it. So this is gonna be three. Me, so I have to like uptick Karn. <laughs> Yikes. Gordon has played seven, eight drops. Yeah, nobody, nobody, whenever I, whenever, I guess this is why I keep having to tell everybody don't play five mana, five, don't play five mana spells in your deck, just as like a rule of thumb, because <laughs> the, the whole chat just loves to spend the whole conversation on actually me, but it's, this is, a, it, it, at the very least, it's a super good rule of thumb that you can use in 
constructing your modern deck lists. Good to discount five drop. I mean, it's a four mana spell. On a black domain? Yeah. So they grab a Haywire Might. They have four mana here. They have Ugin available next turn. Don't really think we can win this game. My mistake for, as, for cutting the break the ice in the sideboard. I thought it was super cool you could tutor for it, but I was like, ah, we haven't played against any Tron this week. All right, let's pack it in. Creativity counted just like that enchantment did. Yeah, I mean, but give creativity counts for four mana. It's it's okay. We don't have to reiterate all this. So I do definitely like the stone braid on the play. Reeves are super nice sideboard cards. I think against this opponent, like just just generally with my Tron opponent, so like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm willing to keep loose hands. I'm willing to like bring in the Ash Maybe I should actually play the fourth ring over. Fourth ring over the March. March can kill Karn, but we also have bindings and like scions for Karn. We're playing Damnation of the New Collect Evidence Wrath. This card is four mana. <laughs> Four mana versus five mana, though. <laughs> but also, they, like, you want to play four mana cards over five mana cards in your Profane Tutor deck. Because in uh, 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 turn for, on turn four is when you can cast Profane Tutor. Or when you get your Profane Tutor card. I don't I don't hate that the Collect Evidence Wrath, but I, I also don't really want to be playing more than one Wrath when I'm on the Leyline Scion plan. I think one is good, but in this build, I don't think you want to play more. Plot is only a sorcery, I believe. Jay sucks. Eh, it's still, like, plus three mana. Or a plus one to three mana on a two mana card is like just a ritual. New Magda, probably worse than Scallywag. Different enough to think about. Okay. Whenever you commit a crime, create a tapped treasure token. Dude, they, these treasure tokens are only tapped because commanded players complain. <laughs> so funny. This ability triggers only once each turn. Sacrifice three treasures, make a. 4-4 four, four, Scorpion Dragon token flying with haste. Okay, so target committing crime is targeting opponents with anything, anything, targeting opponents, anything they control. Wait, this triggers off Mistress Bobble. This triggers off Relic. Sacrifice. This though this card rules. <laughs> this card is really good. Only three treasures for like a 4-4 four, four dragon also is like pretty damn real. I'm gonna keep this. We have double reprieve. We have herbore coffers. I'm just gonna try to like surveil also into a card. Yeah, Scorpion Dragon is really sweet. You know, no, this card is great. It also is just like, kind of good with Scallywag. Scallywag is just another two-mana creature that like once cares about treasures and cares about making... Um, or cares about playing Mistress Bobble. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah opponent, definitely, definitely a loosey-goosey. Tron Gamer. I don't need a third Cabal Coffers, I guess. Pretty likely to reprieve something this turn, so we're just gonna like reprieve into like Tutor uh, Abzan Triumph or sorry, Zogoth Triumph. I guess what I don't love about reprieving this is that they can't crack it this turn, and they can still crack it next turn. So let's yeah, let's just let it go. Although I've kind of telegraphed my reprieve, I suppose. And then I think with the in, or the, the likelihood that they're just gonna crack the map next turn, we can just go into suspend. Probably gonna get Mardu Trium now, so I have double reprieve up, which likely won't be that relevant. No, but this this card rules. This card this card is I think I think is probably better than Scallywag. The fact the fact that it's both like enabler and payoff by itself is awesome. Gonna be committing a lot of crimes. Nice that we can um, cast Karn and hold up Reprieve next turn. Maybe we should add the Break the Ice back, because it'd just be so sick to tutor for it here and overload it. Ugh, my FOMO. I did, like, we didn't get to do it at all yesterday. Um, this could be bait for a Karn. If I Reprieve it, they just get to replay it. 
returning to Copeland anytime soon. I mean, I like Copeland. We'll play more Copeland at some point. So Jace is a Walker Vrabaska. And then she, like, lose her spark or something? Maybe if she kisses Jace enough, the, the spark will come back. So I'm going to reprieve this, because they're, like, almost definitely going to need Karn. Binding is kind of a nice solution to that, I suppose. So I'm going to grab Karn. Wish I could go coding and hold up the reprieve, but I think I just grab coding, hold up reprieve. Hope we don't have Ulamog. Okay, so for Ask of the Silencer, 3 mana 3-3 three, three, Death Touch, whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay 1. If you do, return that card on the battlefield tapped, tapped on your control. It's a treasure artifact and loses all of the types. Weird. You're reading a book? I don't know. I'm okay with complexity creep on magic cards. It is what it is. I think things get to be more interesting and more complicated in general is kind of what I prefer to the uh, power level creep we've experienced in the past. Uh, they did name card. I'm good enough to reprieve this, I think. So this is, is this coming down this turn? Nice. Although what do we get? Another reprieve probably is super sick. So I'm gonna go like swamp, activate coffers, binding coding, and then I can just hold up reprieve. I could st also stone brain, like whatever Tron piece I get here. Reprieves just seems so. Perfect, though. Could maybe also play this. So I have to, in order to leave up Reprieve, I can't use the other coffers. Yeah, it looks like I'd be one mana short of playing the Ashiok out, but not not that the Ashiok really is doing a ton. Um, so I need, to, I need to double check what they, they... They scrined for Power Plant, so that's the one I'll target. Udak with the 36 months. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Could target the Saga here, maybe. How does Rask interact with Grist? I don't want to know. He's seen Udak for the three years. Appreciate you. So this is this is activated ability cannot be activated. I need to repeat. May uh may hey what may or sorry cityscape level away this turn. Gives me full domain, lets me cast a Leyline of the Guild Pact. Probably okay to play this out. Yeah, we grab the leveler. Can we target them with the Ashok just to like see how they cyborged? If there's any more info. Oh, there's some info. <laughs> there's some info. So they don't get to search anything off their saga. Not that there's too much that's relevant. Maybe you'd like a second needle. Not that I think they usually play that. The Jason Ashok fusing the story. Oh yeah, why is Jason funky? They can't. So this doesn't do anything. 
But I need to protect my car next turn. What I can do is level one of the constructs and like turn Ashiok into an artifact. What is this attack? I block with my Ada. You have Dismember. I love this. I love this for me. Reprieve is really valuable. This seem really nice to because if I just reprieve this, they pay four more, and I like unearth get get in for eight. It's like they're at eleven, and they have this ring ticking down. Basically, they just got them on. Oh, wait, maybe I could just kill them right now. Yeah, they're just dead. They're just dead. So I have wanted to do this for the longest time. This is a play I've been wanting to make in modern. Oh, I guess it's just better to target the binding. But I wanted I wanted Car to target Karn to target himself. But you just Karn can target himself and turn him into a four four. It just like oh, it just has been so long since I've seen a spot where it would be relevant. Plus says GGs. Okay, well, this is good. we're gonna give three. Yeah, Gideon at home. Maybe I should just attack with the Karn. And probably not good enough for updated state of modern. Okay, Ashok is, even against a player like my opponent who's playing a little bit looser than usual, I don't think it's worth to have this in. Like, maybe board into leveler. Could, could have a march. Does this make them second planeswalkers? No, of course not. Um, They did two to the leveler last time. March is just so bad. Spell bomb cycles. Spell bomb also gets their leveler from the yard. Yeah, maybe we need that Break the Ice back in. Just would love one more sideboard card. This is passive, turn his activated ability off. Um, it card only affects opponent's permanence. We've already, this one's already been spoiled, right? Uh, he enters the battlefield, any number of target players each discard a card. Wait, I don't think I've seen this. This is an enchantment, okay. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players mill a card and lose life. Wait, this card's... I don't know. Seems... Like there's... Like, I, not that good. Like, the payoff of, like, triggering it a bunch of times with Legend... Maybe, maybe I should reread Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones is a legendary creature that, like, comes back a bunch, right? Maybe maybe Tiny Bones is, like, very good with this card. Yeah, let's mulligan our six. Keep our... Or so mulligan our seven, keep our six. Put back the one ring. Put this into play. Maybe a little too slow, but gotta gotta keep. Yeah, I need to reread Tiny Bones. Give me a second. Tiny Bones. I don't know. Maybe, maybe can someone pull it up? Actually, I can't find it. Um. Well. Probably cooked. I'm going to suspend the Profane Tutor. New Magda is very good, I think. I think that card is awesome. It triggers off Mishra's Bobble targeting your opponent. Okay, good sign. Thank you, Marv. Okay, well, that, that worked out. Okay, so let me hold up Reprieve. Um, okay, so Tiny Bones deals coming to player may cast target non-land permanent from that player's graveyard. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, I don't know. Not not enthused about either Tiny Bones card at the moment. Ugin's bad for me. Am I tutoring Reprieve? Am I tutoring Thoughtseize? Tutor, tutor the Ring, Tutor Cabal Coffers. Yeah, I know just like every every game is like, oh, I have to break the ice tech. I just didn't play against Tron, so I decided to cut it. I don't know. It was like definitely the 16th sideboard card today. Is what it is. The Ring is bad because of Leyline. But one field. I would play Break the Ice, I think. Oh, Ugin gets minuses all my permanents. I see. I see. That's, that's what you mean because of Leyline. All right, let's take the Thoughtseize. Hopefully, draw Cabal Coffers. Not quite that lucky. Yeah, 
your turn. Unlikely to take this one down. Draw another land. What happened to surveil lands being so good, huh? So just Karn for the ring. <laughs> uh, could plus the Karn. Yeah, I guess we just Karn plus one. And then it, this likely gets hit for three. If it gets hit for four, we still get to minus. I'm trying to think about fetch versus non fetch. I guess we'll just play this tapped. Anyone ever say the surveil lands are busted? Yeah. <laughs> Very busted. We should have five a turn. We did not. <laughs> we, there's no Cabal Coffers in play. I put in Needles, my Karn. They still have no greed mana. They also, but they did draw an artifact to get the Karn down. And they're still they're still attacking it. Um, some good draws here. Not one of them. Turn two, Jace Reawakened. How are you casting Jace Reawakened on turn two? If and if your answer to how, if your answer to that question is I'm going to tap two blue mana for it, reread the card. <laughs> but yeah, I agree that Jace would be incredibly broken if you could cast it on turn two. I'm I'm on board. With Leyline? Speaking of Leyline, I hope we draw Leyline Binding off the top. Okay, that can't be activated. It's going to be a hard game to win. Oh, yeah, and a Devotion deck? Let's go. It's also Pioneer Legal, too. Certainly one of our better top decks we could have had. Oh, they have Dismember. Okay, let's let's uh, let's concede. Let's concede. A yield, a yield, a yield. Did not beat Tron two matches in a row. Like, we, we've been kind of working on... Do we have Leyline, Scion? They're just the, the, the nuts again. Um... We've been, we we had worked on like mono blue devotion with like non creature blue permanence a little bit uh, with like Enigma Jewel and just like a lot of Omen of the Seas. I was playing Counterbalance and because you could like get brain cysts, it's just silly. But like having like a good permanent like this seems nice. How exactly does plotting work? I believe I believe so. You exile a, I, I, the the mechanic is very cool. I hope we see other cards with it soon. But I believe you exile a a card. Uh, from your hand, and then you can play it for free at sorcery speed. Um, as long as it remains exiled. Like it. And Jace seems like... And, and Jace can plus one to plot a card mana value three or less from your hand. So, I'm getting my... Scion tooketh. Okay, we'll just get thoughts he's bugged. You pay cost XL card, cast it later time for free at sorcery speed. Yeah. Seems the same for combo decks, just cast all spells for free on combo turn. Well, we don't know, like, we don't know what the plot cards do. We know, like, we know how Jace plots a card. Does not seem insane for combo decks because you can't cast that card until turn four. But you have to always remember, chat, there are no broken mechanics, there are only broken cards. Uh, if, 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 if we don't see anything that's like, you know, <laughs> I, I, at, at the moment, we don't know that there's going to be a broken card with the word plot on it. There could be, but at the moment, that's not something we know. I think I'll just play my Sublime Trium. Storm? Yeah, there, Storm is not a broken mechanic. There are plenty of cards that have the word Storm on them that are very balanced. You've heard of Herd Migration, you heard of Weather the Storm, <laughs> you heard of Bone Marrow Shards. Also not dredge. There's there's plenty of cards that say the word dredge. Dredge is very simple. 
anything that says dredge two on it is a balance card anything that says dredge three four five six is not a very balanced card dredge is a very simple example so my opponent does have a bow master pretty sure i'm grabbing karn here with all this mana cool okay i just got both so Karn for a two, Karn for coding, then they Bowmaster and upkeep. That's such a cooked take. I don't know exactly what cooked means in this scenario. But yeah, there are no broken mechanics. They're only broken cards. Like, like you can you can any mechanic that exists. Companion is another example. Like there are shitty companions that are broken companions. It just it just like it just what what does the card do? If the card does something too good, it's broken. You know, there are plenty of cards with Delve that are not broken too. It's just like you can balance any mechanic. Dredge is a broken mechanic. This is not true. If, if they just never printed a card that had said more than Dredge. If there was never a card printed that said Dredge. If every Dredge card was Dredge two or, two or three. you Like no one would fucking talk about Dredge like this. Dredge, Dredge, Dredge is like, you know... Kind of like the easy example, I think, because it's just like so clear that there never should have been a card that said more than <laughs> dredge more than like <laughs> two or three. At least uh, it's something we can realize at this point. But there are there are there are tons and tons of dredge cards that are are not are are shitty, you know. Dredge is actually broke mechanics, spike coping. Good argument, brother. <laughs> Good argument, brother. There are literally two, three, three good dredge cards, like three broken dredge cards. There, are, there are more bad dredge cards than good dredge cards. Dakbor salvage, I guess. <laughs> dredge, dredge, dredge is so bad. <laughs> uh, gr grave shell crab. Greater Moss Dog. I guess that's just three. I don't know. Nightmare Void. Shambling Shell. Golgari Brown Scale. Molder Vine Cloak. Necroplasms. I've registered Necroplasm, but Necroplasm is totally fine. <laughs> Shenanigans, totally fine. Dark Blast, Deck for Salvage. It's literally Imp, Grave Troll, <laughs> and Thug are like five, four, five, six. These are these are very good. The, the rest of them are mid to bad. Chelsea's playing vintage for what it's worth. Yeah, is it is also bizarre Baghdad, but you know what I mean? It's like we had a molten collapse. Pretty gross. There are no broken mechanics, they're only broken cards. Plus he's kind of painful here. Shell's also like gotta be like one of the worst cards in the vintage dredge deck too, right? What companion? Same thing with companion. Like you have Umori, you have uh Lutri in 60 card formats, although in EDH it's a little more broken. You have Umori, we're so bad. Obosh is pretty balanced. There's there's one other really bad one, right? At the very least, Umori. How good would Dredge be if the card itself was good, not just a plate holder for the Dredge keyword? Like, what if Iteration of Dredge would to be insane? Yeah, it would be insane. But again, but there's no card like that that exists, you know? Surveil here. Yeah, Zerda. Zerda's been in Legacy. But, but again, it's just like... They, they they totally could have printed the companions so much more tuned down than they were too. It's like it's just the cards themselves, and I and people like to like get into stupid like like arguments about about all this stuff. But I, I for me and like my card evaluation stuff, I feel like I've leveled up a lot by just not not. I don't think about mechanics. I just think about cards. I would encourage you also to not think about mechanics. Just think about cards.
I think I'm gonna play. I want the Nile Spell Bomb. It's not that good. Except for Cascade. I mean, Cascade also. Most Cascade cards are fine. <laughs> most Cascade cards are super fine. It's just like instant speed at instant speed at three mana is too good. But the vast majority of Cascade cards are fine. You know, it's just no broken mechanics. Only broken cards. Does the fact that the card only needs to say Dredge 5 can otherwise be vanilla to Strong Factor and Opinion? No, I, I, no, it's not that interesting of a conversation either. But it's also like... this is The mechanic itself is like... Certainly balanced around not not putting it... Not putting... Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm going to draw against a Scam. The mechanic itself is balanced around not putting... Like a super on-rate effect for whatever you're dredging because you can keep getting it back over and over again. And the mechanic is also bounced around, balanced around being able to dump stuff into your own graveyard. Um, and, the, and you know, they they did the mechanic very well for a lot of cards and for uh, exactly Stigweed Imp and <laughs> Golgari Grave Troll. Probably should have never been printed. Does New Jace remind you of Big Teferi a bit? Both casting seven mana worth of spells turn four turn five. New Jace doesn't cast seven, doesn't? It's like five. Unless I'm missing something about it. I think I'm fetching second basic swamp here. Well, maybe I should cast the binding if they just have moon next turn. But I also really want to suspend this, then go binding, then uh, get something. Okay, anti is broken. <laughs> Turn four, two mana for Jace. Cast one, three free drop, and two mana for something else. Okay. Checks out. I'm binding the Voidwalker here. Then what I tutor will depend on what my opponent does with this turn. If they cast Shieldred or Grief, maybe I'm getting Damnation. If they're just leaving up three mana, um, am I going to get the ring? Second Fable. Let me just get a ring. I cast I guess I can't quite cast this and a scion if I draw a scion. I need some juice off this ring. March would be good. Scion would just be good too to have a good blocker here. Plus gonna have like infinite mana. We have to like we have to binding a reflection. Only one damnation in the deck. Can plot cast ancestral visions. Ooh, yeah, I I, I haven't actually like read the <laughs> verbiage on plot. But I'm also interested to know that. So we have. Oh, sorry. The this copper doesn't actually tap for more mana. I should just like. I just plus on a treasure token. Binding this now. Pot, you may pay X and X a card from your hand. Cast it as a sorcery later on without paying its mana cost. Pay X is weird. Like, wait, wait, does Jace also. Do you have to pay the mana for Jace? When you plus. Okay, will they attack me or they attack Karn? They attack me. Cannot use their treasures. I'm going to go down to six light. Okay, you don't. Do, you, do, do all the other plot cards make you spend mana? 
think this was their draw for turn, so I would kind of not expect them to have a Bowmasters here. I'm going down to a measly four life points. And draw Shieldred, Keck W. Jace can cast a spin stuff. It sounds like it can cast a spin stuff, but it also can it can only do that like after turn four or later, unless you have Leyline of Anticipation, which breaks it a little bit. So we saw they were playing Molten Collapse. They didn't kill my car. Maybe they also have Terminator Fatal Push. I'd be surprised if they cast Bowmaster right now. Yeah, so they have Terminate. So now I have to I go Karn for another ring. I guess I could also go explosives on zero and play Scion and lose two. Removal spell. And I wouldn't be able to cast the Scion next turn either. Yeah, I have to ring because of monkey. I think I have to... Well, so if I draw a card, I can't go fetch Overgrown Tomb, cast, this, cast Leyline, cast Scion. But if I do that, then they'll be able to go end of turn, copy this. They'll be attacking me for 8. I'll be blocking 1, gaining 4, taking 6, and dying anyways. So I still need to draw something. So I should draw off the ring. Plotting only cast a spell for free on a later turn. Yeah, so, yeah, so if you have Leyland of Anticipation, can you cast a plotted spell on your opponent's turn? Because if so, Jace is really sick with Leyland, where you get to go, Jace, plot, cast something for three at, at mana at instant speed. Oh, but you can't do it the same turn. Okay, so you, you would have to be the still following turn. They also get to unlock treasures here. No, because you so you could only ever cast a plotted spell on your turn, even with Leyline. Can't wins over can. Okay, interesting. Draw another land. That do a bowmaster. They top deck bowmaster. Game three, G three. Bring in this Nile spell bomb over a thought season the play. Oh, Seize is also really good on the play. Everything's pretty good here though. Only a sorcery doesn't supersede cards. I can do it anytime. Okay. So, worse with Leyline then. But still probably okay. You can still just go Jace on turn two, plot, untap, cast your spell for free. So, what I don't like about this hand is I can't go Thoughtseize into Profane Tutor. Let's go to six. Hand is way better. I think like Basic Swamp, I guess, is a little weird. Becker Ring. It's also the mobile six. Oh, it's two triumphs to use the real line. Felt it's felt pretty correct, I think. You can't cast him turn two. You can cast him turn two with Leyline, I believe. At least that's what people in chat are telling me. Yeah, you can't cast it on your first, second, or third turns, but if you have Leyline of Anticipation, you can cast it on your opponent's turn. So this is potentially like a mono blue devotion deck. Um seems kind of interesting. Because it has specific amount of have to be known information, makes it easy to play around. Wait, when you plot, you you have to show your opponent the card. Wouldn't you just show them, them the mana value after you cast it? Like, hey, mana value three or less. Can you cast the backside of Valky with Jace? Chat. <laughs> Can you cast the backside of Valky? Can you cast Valky with Jace? Oh, it's exiled face up. Okay. That's also very interesting. I assume it was face down. Can we get a judge to confirm? Confirm or deny? Maybe I should play Urborg instead. 
Does does can you cast Valky if you foretell a Tybalt off Jace Reawakened? Because if so, we can turn you can turn three Valky again. You can turn one Valky turn two turn two Valky again if you have Gemstone Caverns, I guess. So yeah, it seems like okay. People are saying it works. Okay. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> you can cast Valky <laughs> off of the new Jace as soon as turn two in modern with gemstone caverns and a ley line of anticipation <laughs> uh -huh. okay two into two two turn three earliest with caverns oh right right because right, you you don't have two man okay as soon as turn three as soon as turn three in modern because you can, I, for some reason i'm thinking you could have caverns and then play your land and then tap it for two so as soon as turn three in modern with Ley line of anticipation. But even just doing it turn four, like on turn four, you can go Jace, cast Valky, Jace, cast Valky with uh, a counter spell up. Seems nuts. This hand also seems nuts. Um, let's put back the Karn. Oh, but you can't activate on your opponent's turn. That makes okay. Jace is a lot worse then. I don't know why I thought you could. I haven't tweeted yet, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna say also pair as well with Leyland of Anticipation to So tough. So up against scales here. What is how does this mechanic work again? <laughs> plot to plot as soon as turn two. Plot as soon as turn two. Wait, turn three. Turn two with gemstone caverns? <laughs> no. Well, you can cast the Jace on your turn two, then you untap and you have the Jace in play. I guess it's not until turn three. So weird, so confusing. Take everything back I said about complexity creep. You can't cast Jace before. You can cast Jace or you can cast Jace on turn two if you have Leyland of Anticipation. So it's turn three after you cast Jace on their end of turn two. Still won't be able to cast Valky till turn four, no matter what. Uh-oh, you can cast both. Yeah, this is also both Pioneer and Modern. Wait, do you only get two pictures on Twitter? Okay. You can't show this on the JSON turn three. I guess you can off with off Leyline. Okay, so does this look accurate? Uh-oh, you can cast Valky off the new Jace. Also pairs both Leyline of Anticipation, both Pioneer and Modern. To plot as soon as turn three after you cast Jace on their end of turn two. Won't be able to cast Valky till turn four, no matter what. But that also good. And to, and no. Oh. Wait, is this also a word? I didn't get spell checked. Anticipation. Always a spelling bee. My tweet. Use a decent card without later. Yeah, just just going turn four, Jace with counter spell up cast Valky seems nuts. I think I want the slots ease. It's like it'd be easier to put in play without cast. You have to use Leyland to get around restriction. Well, I mean, just being able to go end of turn Jace, untap plot seems very good in both modern and pioneer. Potentially, is this a devotion deck? You don't have to play Leyland. Um, 
I'm going to put the counters on the Ink Moth. Okay, that plays well around uh, my Leyland Binding, I guess. Yeah, the plot says you have to cast on later turn, but just like, but like storing it basically, like, like you just get to do whatever you want on turn three, and then turn four you cast it for free after you've already plotted it. That seems okay to me at least. Okay, tweet, post it. Thank you for that check. Still need four Borg with We're playing three of Borg. I think three is a good number. You could play four. Combining that. Problem is this Haywire might that they're playing around perfectly. Will the new Jace even be good for Mill? No players, I'm sorry. I don't think about you ever. <laughs> Dude, this Haywire White is so sick with the cauldron. Sorry, Mill players. I don't ever think about you. <laughs> But I I don't know I I don't think it would be good in mill, <laughs> mill's still not good. Oh wait, they're so they're cauldroning, the call the ravager or maybe they're just gonna binding the, might the binding though. Like, draw a card, Edict you. Oh, holy shit, we drew another binding. <laughs> Gotta binding this before they can get Might going. It's probably mis pretty misplayed for them to, like, Cauldron the Ravager there, right? I'm just gonna Cauldron the Might. The problem is 16% of the time, you won't draw late in the opener, then what? In this deck? Oh, in that deck? Well, you get every ball, you can just Mulligan. You also don't, don't need Leyline in that deck. Like, you can just cast Jace on turn four. <laughs> That's then what? But just, like, being able to play Jace into, like, being able to actually cast turn two, maybe maybe playing it in a Mono Blue Devotion Shell is also, like, kind of just interesting. But this seems like it's got big Pioneer and uh, modern implications to me. Do you like New Jace with your store balance? Yeah, yeah. I, I seems Seems like a good plan, too. Okay, so we get... Bunch of new cards here. Opponent is got quite the board state though. Land into Karn Profane Tutor. We already have Urborg in play. So it's up for five, and I have seven, seven total. So I can go Karn for Ensnaring Bridge. Karn for Explosives on one. Karn for Tithing Blade? Probably not Tithing Blade. Let's cast the card. Staring Bridge seems pretty good. They can kill the Karn with the Construct, but if that's their whole turn. Obviously, like, a little awkward to be in Staring Bridge plus the Ring, but... Not that awkward when their stuff is so big. They can probably get Haywire for Saga. They've, this is game one. They've already used the Haywire Might. Um, so I'm not the most worried about it. Getting Valky off Jace. And then untapping with Counter Magic and Hand Disruption seems nuts. Yeah, I, I agree. But Jace, it kind of makes all the no mana cost to spin cards pretty good. Yeah. I mean, those cards are already pretty good. <laughs> but yeah. Makes them better, I agree. The time to unbank attacks and probe. If if I I also love the card Dimulich, but let's let's never unbank attacks and probe. Free spells are mainstream and modern, but I don't know. It's people people just always love to be like, hmm, what what just what can I say today to justify my my pet card getting unbanned? What can I say? <laughs> so Spike will unban my pet card. But boy, Damian Lich Phoenix is tier zero with Gitax and Probe unbanned. You could have had Violent Outburst into Jace. Yeah, you, you know what? I wouldn't be that surprised if, like, 
if if violent outburst casting jace uh at instant speed didn't factor in a little bit too or like maybe even a lot of bit <laughs> into their decision to ban violent outburst Ooh, their own ring i love that the scales gamers are playing the ring again good chance i'm just tapping my ring on their turn so i can have my bridge in play kind of scared of uh i guess this still won't be able to attack let's just draw three cards how bad could they be? Cowards can't block warriors, my friend. I guess I should have been asking how good could they, can they be? Because they can't be that much better than this. Would an outburst cascade into Valky? Right. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't have factored that much in then. Outsource ship to Marty be fine, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming the preview stream is happening or just happened because we've got a lot of uh, new cards. Oh, it still hasn't happened? We have all these new cards? That's cool. Could even cast Jason Bile Opera since written you can't cast spell in your first third turns. No, yeah, you though you, you can though, because it's it's on your first, second, or third turn. So if you if you cast you can cast Jace at instant speed during the first three turns. But but you know they but they banned outburst, so you can't anymore. They put the cards up early. Oh, okay, so nobody's gonna watch the stream, I guess. What's the utility of using plot the fairway? Uh with with Jace, you basically get to like you think of it as plus one plus three mana. Like if you if you plot a three mana spell and you get to cast it for three mana, then all of a sudden you're you're just you're just up so much mana. So this is not resolving this turn. Get a demonic tutor next turn though, which will almost definitely find us Karn unless we find a Karn off of our ring. Control two now. Oh, we did find a wow. Is it confirmed that you can cast turn one on opponent's turn? Yeah, but you won't have a way to make two blue mana on your opponent's turn one because of Gemstone Cavern's not working. But you can you can play Gemstone Caverns, cast it. You know, no, no matter what, it's going to be on your opponent's second turn. What is the plot mechanic? So if you plot something, you can cast it for free on a later turn at sorcery speed, which I think is cool. It's plot basically for tell. It's kind of like for tell, except you have to play it at instant speed or sorcery speed, and you cast it for free. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool mechanic. Well named too, I think. That's a lot of counters. Would be a shame if someone engineered explosive. As much as I'd love to play this shield red, I kind of, I kind of feel like I should hold up fatal push or push this walking blister more. Also, what can they even do? I don't know what they can do, but it's also like whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is is going to be a lot easier to handle if I have this fatal push up. I have a crazy game, especially like after my opponent went on. That crazy Haywire might line that played around my hand so well. Yeah, the XL card is face up, which I actually like that a lot. Playland Dragon go bring to light with the new Jason Hockey. <laughs> We're gonna have some fun with the new set. I... Dude, they have Blink Moth Nexus that could pump their Ink Moth Nexus and get around Scion here. They see Mana Drain is coming to Timeless. No fucking way it is. Are you kidding? What a mistake. <laughs> what a huge mistake. <laughs> You're kidding me, Mana Drain's coming to Timeless. Get out of here. It's on the bonus sheet. 
<laughs> what a huge mistake. <laughs> it's gonna be so sick in show and tell. Oh, dude, it's perfect with my car in show and tell list, too, with all the like, extra colorless cards. Is managing that bad? Like, Counterspell is already one of the best cards in Timeless. It's like, it's like probably a top 10 Timeless card, top 15. And like, oof, bleh, what are we doing here? Um, What I'm doing here is probably Damnationing. But also, you know, I, I'm like, I'm going to cast, damn, I'm going to cast some mana drains. Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll be a good restricted card. I feel, I actually feel like, I feel like mana drain will be a great restricted card. Just have one. But I, I don't, I don't think the format can survive that card being unrestricted. I, 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 I think if it's like pre-restricted, it'd be pretty cool. I'm happy with this deck? Yeah, I'm pretty happy. We're like six and three with it. Probably about to be seven three. I think I think I think that this is probably how I would build coffers going forward with um I think with the non-coffers deck just being like the better like sunken citadel field, more interactive version. This is just like more I'm I'm gonna have a broken draw kind of deck, which is like what coffers wants to be. Well, I don't know if that's like the best way to articulate it. We're gonna watch the party the announcement in a few minutes. No, the, the like the magic streams are not that fun to watch for me. I think they're like very I, I like everyone's just dying to get to the meat and the potatoes of it. And you know, they they just do a bunch of corporate stuff and that's fine, but I just I just like to get the summary later. Try adding griefs for extra ley lines. Uh, we have March for extra ley lines. You can't just add grief, you also have to add scam cards, which is not not enough room. But you can't you can't just add uh can't add grief without scam cards. Update on the Just Get Wizard list? Mm, not really. I've kind of looked at it some lately. Maybe I should. Work on it some more. Alright, well, let's hand rules. Just like, like again, like just Leyline is just very good with Cabal Coffers. <laughs> That's what this deck is built around. Let's, Leyline's line is very good. Let's, let's, well, you can pitch it to March. Let's, let's play Leyline and Coffers. I think it, I think it makes a lot of sense. And then say I'm better than Grief Scam. In, in Coffers, I think it is, because there's just, like, so much synergy here. I think in the non-Coffers build, I'd rather play Grief Scam. See, Mana Drain exists as a card. Yeah, I mean, it was... Mana Drain was printed back when Mana Burn was a thing, and that was kind of, like, the idea. It's, like, high upside, very risky. Still always broken, though. Play the Goblin Novel Soup deck last week. Yeah, that deck is really cool. I'll ho hopefully, I'll play it more again one day. All right, I'm going to go after the scales here. Them having no creatures in the yard and me having Karn to turn off the cauldron. Get like a second Cabal Coffers, maybe. Thanks, Glint. But wait, they're talking about MH3 cards on the stream? Okay, maybe we should have watched. So what's wrong with... Binning a late line. Dude, my opponent's got one card in their hand. No MH3, they were trolling me. Okay. <laughs> trolling all of us. We're also thirsty for the MH3 cards. So I'm going to grab a second coffers here. How easy do you think committing crime will want to be? Well, you can you can trigger it with just Mishra's Bobble. Like the the new the new Magda seems really good because it just like triggers with Bobble. Then it's like it's both an enabler for treasures and a really good payoff. I think I think that that card rules. Um, let's just ring here. 
Like, you, if you have two bobbles, like, you can even just go, like, bobble on your turn, bobble on your opponent's turn, I think. Maybe maybe it can only trigger on your turn, committing a crime, but... Seems like it'll likely be very good. Blinging Coffer is performing better than Single Source. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking this deck a lot. If that's what you're asking. Sounds like it is. <laughs> two, two Fatal Pushes. So I think I'm probably going to get Coding. So I can go Coding, Target Urza Saga, make them make their Construct right now, push the Construct, push the Zabaz, and then just hold up Binding. Yeah, Relic of Bridgetonis also triggers Magda, also triggers Roods. Yeah, the new Nathan card. The new set looks awesome. I'm 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 stoked already. Usually, yeah, I feel like card design's just been so good, y'all. I I'm like pretty pretty happy with the way things have been looking. If they can't tap their cauldron, I don't need to binding it. The game's pretty over. They're going to needle my car, and I'm going to binding the needle. Only the set had a better name. I, I I agree. Think of delay. Inflex wants of creativity. It's it's good against opposing counter spells. Good tempo card. Great to parry. Y'all, this is modern. The card counter spell exists. Mana leak exists. Reprieve exists. You don't have to play this card that, like, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops. <laughs> you have to jump through hoops for it to be a counter spell. You could just... You, the counter spells are really good. Delay also has the downside of just letting them recast their thing. <laughs> you know, it's... Just to play Reprieve, play, play Remand, play Mana Leak, play Spell Pierce. Play the good ones. A sign of Draco. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I started to and play. Good time to make a mistake. Great time to make a mistake. So, 4 1 into 3 2 with the Coffers deck. We'll take it. Um, let's pivot to the backup deck, um, which I think is a great backup deck. We're like two backup.